My name is Solomon, and today I will walk you through how to work with multiple Interbotics X-Series arms. In the first example, we're going to look at the Interbotics XS Arm Dual ROS package. You can see that over here. When it comes to creating a ROS package for controlling multiple arms, there's a few things you should consider. Number one, in the launch file, like the one here, you can uh, click on it. You will be calling the Interbotics XS Arm Control, specifically the XS Arm Control .launch file twice, because in this case we're controlling two different arms. So one one XS Arm Control .launch call would be for one arm, and the other one would be for the second arm. But theoretically speaking, you could do this with three arms, with four arms. I think the most I've ever done it with is um, uh, seven of our robotic platforms, and I think four of them were arms, three of them were turrets. But the only limitation is really the number of USB ports and how much processor power you have for your computer. But in this example, we're just going to focus on controlling two arms, like I said. So we have these two calls to the Interbotics XS Arm control file, and then just for Arvis purposes, I'm creating a broadcaster node for locating for positioning each robot specifically uh, with respect to the world frame and then I'm going to show it in Arvis. So that's one thing to think about. Um, another thing to consider if you go back here we have a config directory. So we have two modes.yaml mode, modes .yaml files. The first one is of course for controlling the, your first robot and you can set up what you want your operating mode to be. In this case, I'm gonna be operating with the arm in position control mode. I want each motion to take two seconds with 300, of, 300 milliseconds for accelerating and 300 milliseconds for decelerating and for it all to start uh, torqued. And then for the gripper, I want that to operate in PWM mode and I want that to be torqued on as well by default. Um, but you should really note here that you should specify the port for which of your USB ports the arm is connected to. If you look here for the modes2.yaml file, pretty much everything is the same because I want the arms to operate in a similar fashion. The only difference is that the port here is for USB 1. So that's just something you really should consider is um, figuring out which port goes to which robot. At the very least, the way it works is the first USB cable that you plug into your, into your computer will be assigned USB 0, and then the second USB cable will be assigned USB 1. But you can also create sim links for uh, each of your robots, and I go into that more in the README for this ROS package. And another thing to note is that in this launch file, I specify what the name is of our first robot. I call it arm1. And the name for the second robot, I call arm2. So if we go to the Python script that I have over here. So what I do in my main function is I initialize a, a, a node and I just call it XS arm dual. Then I call, I start two threads. The first thread is for the first robot and the second thread is for the second robot. The reason is because in this uh, specific example, I want both robots to do the same motions or same but opposite motions uh, simultaneously without having to wait for each other. So in the first thread, um, it's very important that even though I, you know, I specify the robot model name as the Widow X200, which is true, I'm using two Widow X200 arms for this example, it's important to specify the robot name argument to be the same name that you that was specified in the launch file. But just like in the launch file, I specified this to be arm1. So here too, it's important to specify this as arm1. Same thing goes for here. Even though uh, I specify the robot model, I cannot leave the robot name blank. I must specify this to be arm2 since that is the name of the robot name to launch file argument for our second robot in the launch file. All right, so let's just walk through specifically what this uh, Python script is doing. So for each of the robots, for each of the robots, I'm just bringing it out of the cradle from the sleep position to an end effector position of 0.3 in, in the X direction and 0.2 in the Z direction. Uh, then I'm just going to open the gripper and I'm just going to delay for uh, 0.05 seconds before moving on to the next line of code where in for the first robot I move 45 degrees uh, counterclockwise 
And in the case of the second robot, I move counter I move clockwise uh, 45 degrees. Then I close the gripper again, wait 0.05 seconds. And then I move both of the waste servos uh, back to zero, which essentially brings the robot back to the 0.3 for the X direction for the X uh, component and, and 0 0.2 for the Z component. Then I bring the robots to go to sleep. Um, also, you should note that I'm setting the moving time here to be one second for each of these motions. Gripper pressure is one. That is the maximum gripper pressure that we can have. Um, and init node is false since I've already initialized the node over here. And in general, when you're working with multiple arms, uh, I think it's just better practice you to, to just have a single, to have your Python script act as a node itself. And then each of the robots should be part of the same you know, parent node here, XSARM dual. Okay, so let's uh, let's actually run this and see how it works. So we're going to um, take this, move it over here. Okay, bring up a terminal by pressing Control Alt T, and type ROS launch interbotics XSARM dual XSARM dual dot launch. And then I've already predefined what robot what the robot names are in the launch file, like you've already seen. So I'm just going to set use dual rviz is equal to true because by default that's false because we want to see how everything works. So launch that. Here we have our two robots. Um, so if I make the if I turn rviz this way, um, essentially this robot corresponds to this one. And this robot corresponds to this one. All right, so let's run it. We're going to go to our terminal, press Control Shift T to open up another terminal. CD, inter, oh, well, actually, we can do ROS, CD, Interbotics, Access Arm, Dual. Then we're going to go to the scripts directory. And now we're going to run that script. So press Enter. So that was me running it, and I'll just run it again because it was a little bit fast. So that's how you work with uh, two arms for our interbotics line of arms. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is working how to work with our interbotics XSARM puppet ROS package. So the Puppet ROS package can be used in two ways. The first way is where I control this arm here, and this arm is going to be torqued off while this arm is torqued on. And as I manually move this one, this one, uh, which is torqued on, will follow the exact same motion. So that's good. Let's say I have five robots, and I want to control one of these robots to make the other four do some task, for example. So by me just manipulating one robot, I can get four other robots to do a certain task. So that might be more efficient in some cases. Another example could be, let's say I have, you know, maybe this is the PX150 robot and this is a Viper X300 robot. So since this would be a smaller robot, I can manipulate this robot and the uh, larger robot would follow the same motion. So instead of having to um, manually manipulate a really large robot, I can manipulate smaller robot platform to get the bigger robot to follow the motion. Okay, just going to point out a couple things in that package. So if we go here, we go to examples, go to puppet. Okay, so we're going to look at the config directory here. So for our puppet example where we're controlling two arms, so the master is the one that I'm controlling. So of course I have to start that out by uh, disabling the torque so that I can manually manipulate it. Also, you have to make sure you know which port you're connected to. I, I connected it to USB zero, but the puppet mode YAML file, so that actually is gonna be USB one and it's gonna be torqued on for the arm and for the gripper. And I've set the profile velocity and acceleration to be zero. So that'll make both That'll make all the motors uh, closely follow um, what the desired positions are from this arm. Okay. 
So that's the first way. So let's just uh, do a demo showing that, and then I'll explain what the second way is. Uh, go back to this page here. Okay. Let's elongate this. Great. So now let's type ROS launch antibiotics XS arm puppet access arm puppet dot launch robot model master is equal to widow x 200 and robot model puppet is equal to widow x 200 so in both of these cases i have two widow x 200 arms so i'm just going to have both for uh, that's why i'm sending both of them to widow x 200 okay so press enter Here we have our two arms, and again, if I orient arms like this, the one on the left here corresponds to this robot, and the one over here corresponds to this robot. So as I move this robot, that robot should move as well. Okay, so that's that demo. Control C. The second way you can use that ROS package is for recording and playback. So, um, so that's good, for example, if you only have one robotic arm and you want to manually manipulate the arm to some desired poses, and then you want to play back that motion as many times as possible. Um, so that's great if you want to make the arm do specific tasks and instead of hard instead of hard coding values uh, into a Python script, you just want to use, um, you just want to record yourself manually manipulating the arm and then the arm will just follow it back. So to get that started, let me just unplug my second robot here since we're not going to use it. And if you have two robots connected to your computer right now, you should also make sure that only one of them, the, the one that you're going to be using is connected. Um, and we're going to record some motion. So type in your terminal, ROS launch interbotics xsarm puppet, and then xsarm puppet single dot launch. Robot model is equal to widow x200. Um, and then we're going to set record to true. Just before we press enter on that, I'm going to go back here and show you the other two config files. So when, now we're going to be focusing on the record modes and playback modes. So the record modes, like the master modes in the other YAML file, we're going to have this torqued off because that's how you're going to be able to manipulate the arm. And then once uh, we want to play it back, we're going to have to make sure the arm and gripper are torqued back on. And we're going to set the profile velocity acceleration to zero so that uh, it can really quickly provide, uh, it can really tr quickly track the motion um, that uh, we recorded. Okay, so let's do that. Record equals true. Press enter. All right, so now let's move the arm a bit. All right, now we can press Control C and that'll stop the recording process. And now, if you look, there should be a new bag file in the config directory. So let's just go there really quickly. Raw CD, Interbotics, XS Arm, Puppet, CD uh, Bag. I don't know if I said config directory, but I meant bag directory. And you'll see there's something called widow x200 commands.bag. That's the one we just generated. Um, so we're going to go play that one back right now. So to do that, let's type, um, let's first change into change directory so we don't have that whole trail of characters and type ROS launch interbotics access arm puppet access arm puppet single dot launch robot model is equal to widow x200. Playback is equal to true. The bag name 
is widow x200 commands. We don't have to add the dot bag to it. It's already understood. And let's press enter and see if the robot plays back those commands. All right, that looked good. Um, and if you want, you can play that back again by going to that ROS package, typing ROS CD and Robotics XS Arm Puppet, um, and then go to the bag directory. And then you can just type ROS bag play, widow x200 commands.bag, press enter. And it'll replay that bag file for you. So if you wanted to do this, use this uh, feature in practice, I would recommend actually creating your, uh, your own a separate launch file to launch your bag file. Or uh, maybe you'll create a Python script to, lo to load in your bag file and then play it as many times as you want. Um, that gives you a little bit more control over how your robot will work. Um, all right, so let's control C out of that. And just for fun, you might have noticed there's another bag file in there called duck dunk. So let's just see what that does. And we can try it out by just typing ROS launch. Interbotics, XS arm puppet, XS arm puppet, single dot launch robot model equal to WX250. Use sim is equal to true. We don't actually, well, there's two reasons to do that. Number one, we don't actually have a widow X250 arm in the office. And two, who knows what this bag file uh, really does. So probably should try it out in a simulator before trying it out in real life. Okay, so use sim is equal to true, playback is equal to true, and the bag name is called duck dunk. Um, and by default, the bag, the bag name looks in the bag directory in the ROS package. Let's press enter. Here we have our Widow X250 robot. Let's see what it does gets up, looks like it's trying to grab something that's in front of it, grips it, brings it up, raises it, and then seems to throw it. And then it goes back down. So in this case, I have a small rubber ducky that I just dropped, but whatever, it's a small rubber duck um, that it's picking up and then it was throwing it into a, uh, into a mug. Um, and it actually was able to, uh, to, uh, to throw it into the mug every time we played back that bag file. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay. So let's control C out of that. And that is how you can use the Innerbotics XS Arm Puppet Ross package. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.